I was looking at this picture the other day. It's a huge picture of, um, you know, galaxies, right? There's like all of these, you know, galaxies and, you know, and, and, and then there's a little, tiny little arrow in the middle of this like crazy big thing with dots. And the arrow, and then next to the arrow, it says, you are here, act like it. And you look at this vastness, you know, and you're like, man, I am, I am so insignificant, but I take myself so seriously. You know, as you grow as a human being from being a child to being an adult, I think you're slowly learning what it means to do something for someone else. So stepping outside of yourself. So you're moving from being selfish, all about me and my needs, to all of a sudden needs of somebody else. And, and we become more interested about needs of others that we slowly become part of that whole. My name is Emmerich Mazbuko. I live in Evanston, Illinois, in the United States. I work for a social service agency. Evanston, for example, has a ton of resources, but sometimes those resources are out of reach for some kids for whatever reason. So what YU does is that it addresses that, you know, tries to bring those resources to those people um, and to those kids and through listening, because not all kids need, it's not all families need the same thing. Should I set up the interview with Northwestern? Do it. I'll do no, it. this one's fine. You have nothing to lose. True. Sure. Absolutely nothing to lose. And the way that the organization does this is through after-school programs, clinical services, there's a communities and school uh, program, a street outreach or outreach, you know, community outreach, you know, program, and then there's a 24-7 crisis um, hotline for runaway youth. So if a young person finds themselves in a situation where they don't have a place to stay, trying to figure out housing for kids, trying to find food or you know, going to police stations, resolve crisis, so you can reunite kids with their parents, you know, just all of those kinds of things. And the more you do it, the more you get lost in that. So the more you get pulled, the more important it becomes that you are clear in what your reasons are. This is what my father t tells me a lot. I grew up in South Africa. My father was a Baha'i, uh, became a Baha'i in the 1960s when he was in college. My mother was a um, second generation Baha'i. The differences between being a Baha'i and becoming a Baha'i, the parents themselves are responsible. I mean, parents are responsible for their children's well-being, you know, um, from food to, you know, the basic needs, you know, and also to sort of influence what kind of child the person becomes in the world at some point because parents are essentially teaching this new person who doesn't know what it means to be a human being. They're teaching them this is how it is to be a human being in this society where we live. The Baha'i faith in itself, if your parents have that, they use that as sort of like the building blocks, as sort of things for you to then at some point build off of. You then become a Baha'i through personal choice. So my neighborhood, my neighborhood kids, you know, my, my neighborhood friends always knew, yeah, Emmerich's Baha'i. We don't really know what that means. They're Baha'i in the family. There's these strange people that come around sometimes and you select like these white people or these Indians or this colored folk way, way back in the 80s when it was really bad for people to be in the wrong neighborhood. So people notice. So people always, you know, wherever I live, they always, yeah, they do this thing. It's not bad. It's not viewed as like this negative thing. It's just kind of cool that they can do that. But I don't think people knew that it was a religion. You know, so I think that what I bring to the world is a group of people at a specific time in, in sort of like this long line, right? of incredible things that have happened and growth, you know, humans. Like, I'm part of this little link at this point, or at least I want to, you know, that is helping shift from one way of thinking um, about the world into another. So whatever my individual talents are, my contribution is to make sure that I'm also part of that. Because, you know, I used to believe that, you know, change is going to come and it's going to drag you with it. 
you know, um, whether you want to or not, you know, this by this faith is going to breach everybody. So you're either going to join in or it's going to drag you along, but it won't drag you along. You know, change comes, but growth is optional.